Right, so assembling uh, the Armageddon Medusa. Um, you can see I've painted most of the parts, and at this point I've paused my build process to show you through the challenges I've had so far. Um, right, so you can see obviously uh, it's made of the Chimera uh, body with the resin parts uh, being obviously the main sort of uh, gunnery area. Uh, obviously being resin, I had to thoroughly wash and clean these in warm soapy water. Um, and then it was a lot of cutting off the actual um, resin frame or resin sprue. Uh, that wasn't easy. Uh, for example, you can see the bottom floor here, which I'll come into in more detail. The way it's basically attached is this great big fat uh, pieces of resin, which when I chopped off didn't have a very clean finish. Um, also, you can see in the sort of the top right here, um, I've got footage of me actually cutting away some of the parts, and it included actually snapping off one of the hinges of um, uh, the rear door, and that was probably my fault, but just the way it's set up is not easy, so actually cutting away from the resin sprue, so to say, isn't always easy. Uh, then I extensively dry fitted, extensively, extensively, and this is where the frustration started. So to focus on what I've assembled so far, um, it is after the fact, so to say, once I assembled the plastic componentry and put in the this rear gunnery um, compartment that I realized that basically you need to have chopped out, it's hard to say, I'll do it up in this camera here, you need to have chopped out this section here to make it actually fit. But because I did it after the fact when this was assembled, I've had to chop a big chunk of it out here. It's not pretty, but it doesn't matter because underneath the bottom of the, the model, but ugh, otherwise it sits too high, it's so super frustrating. Um, then there was a lot of bending, so I think when I had this uh, first put in here, it was very visible that these parts well, basically this sort of little bucket area was really bent, so I had to put it in uh, hot water and bend it back in place. Now what was a horrible experience was making uh, this floor um, structure. It looks really good once it's done, but making this sort of come together was an absolute nightmare. So it's made of three layers. You've got the, the, the chunkiest part, which is, I don't know if, it's, if you can see it in this, this light here, or maybe in here, but you can actually see through this metal, um, and it's got a lot of detail. It's actually got like, rounds of ammunition built up, which is really cool detail, and some other minor detail there. So it's made of that layer, a metal layer, you can see here, which is basically what you see there, the grill, and then this final piece of resin. Now this final piece of resin was an absolute nightmare. Uh, when it comes, uh, as per the footage I've got on the top right there, you can see basically you have to cut this all out, and that wasn't easy. It actually included me snapping a bit here, which is, not too much of a problem, but you know, it just makes it hard. Um, so that wasn't easy, but then the worst part was actually just lining these all up here. Um, it's almost like it isn't designed to do it properly, so I had to basically put the bottom one in first with a super glue, line it up to the back, and then make these other two bits, both the metal part and the resin part, marry up. Now, getting this floor to fit was an absolute nightmare. So if I tried to put it in without cutting away bits, it simply wouldn't slide through because there is some detail like in here and here, which if you slide this thing in, it doesn't actually fit. So I don't know if I can show it the light that well, but I've had to cut entire chunks out of this uh, top floor section to make it fit. So you can actually see I've cut, like, cut out so much here to make it physically fit and likewise there and even gone as far as actually cutting uh, the top of this bottom floor out as well. So that's made it all finally marry up, but that was an absolute ball like, oh man. Um, right, so that aside, it, it, it looks okay. And do remember, once you've got the, the roof on top, you can't see a lot of these problems, but if you just sort of look at it from there, it looks okay. So then everything else that's painted, um, I'm not gonna assemble it now, because I need to finish off one final detail, but from there it's as basic as, um, you've got the door, which goes on these hinges here. Now, I can't think of a way to magnetize this so I could display it open and closed, uh, depending on if I wanna sort of show it off, um, I don't know, around the house or something, uh, even on the tabletop, or have it closed up. So that, that goes in there. And what's gonna be a nightmare, which I'll show later, is basically making the gun fit in the actual carriage. So you can see it's pretty straightforward to start. Putting these, uh, I don't know, what do you call them? Gun stands in here. And a key problem already is that naturally they actually tilt in. Now, 
Okay, so once that's, I'm not going to glue it obviously, this is for the demonstration, but then basically, like I don't know how I'm going to do it with super glue to give myself time to move it, but that's going to go in there. And then obviously it all sits nice and snug like that. Now, next is a bit of coordination that's required. So you've got obviously the roof, which is, which is all good. Uh, and then you've got these amazingly cool um, bits of interior detail, which I, I put a lot of effort into making them look quite nice uh, as far as like the interior equipment are concerned, including some custom details with some plastic bits. So with some trusty blue tack, um, it is a matter of getting these things to go into uh, the upper roof, so to say. Now, you can't, you can't glue these in place first. You have to basically glue them to the roof because the way that um, this is the bottom bucket, I'm gonna start calling it, and this interacts is, um, and when this goes in with this bit here, it, it, it all interacts together, it has to be sort of assembled like this. So you basically stick this in like that. And like this. And you're basically making them marry up as best as possible. Yeah, that's the key part there. And there. <sighs> okay, and this is when it's not easy, so. This thing, when it comes out of the box, this isn't wide enough for the bloody gun. So I've had to chop a boatload of resin off this to actually make it fit uh, here. And even then, it's not enough I've chopped up. So again, I don't know how to do this when it's, it's glued, but you, know, you, you want to give it potentially some elevation, depending on what you want to go for. And then this thing has to snuggle its way in here, yeah, that's an absolute fucking pain in the ass. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna swear because it's not good for YouTube, but I want to swear a lot right now. Um, now, this is again, when I'm gonna glue this, I don't know how I'm gonna do it because okay, it's assembled. Now, what I found is actually there's a massive problem with the stands not staying in place, so it's hard to show in. I don't know, I'm gonna show this bit. I don't know if you can even see it from this, this camera angle here, but basically one of the gun stands, the, the weapon stands, isn't even in, it is, you can't see it, it's just all dark in the picture, but basically one of the gun stands is not even kissing the floor anymore because I just think the way it's been designed, not, not, not enough actual space in there um, to make it fit. So I don't know if you can see the angle, but maybe I'll try it with uh, moving my light around, but. I don't know if you can see it from that angle there, but the, the right gun stand doesn't even touch the floor anymore. It's visibly sort of popped up, which is incredibly frustrating. Um, but, I mean, yeah, anyway. So from there, um, a key challenge was actually trying to make this all marry up. And it's not doing too bad now because of all the incredible amount of bending and warping I did. Um, with the hot water. To be fair though, once the water was, you don't do it with boiling water, but you do it quite hot water. It is quite malleable, it can move a lot. Um, but once all that gluing's done, it actually looks pretty mean. Um, I do like it a lot actually. I'm gonna play it a fair bit because I spent so much time making it. Um, and um, I'm gonna probably finish off this and skip forward into the future. Um, I've assembled a little custom crewman. Um, so using some bits from the actual tank accessory frame. Um, and I've taken just some, I don't know, a spare hand from somewhere, uh, chopped it and sort of made him look like that. So you're gonna touch some equipment and this semi wonky, uh, what is meant to be like a barrel pull through or push through, I don't know what you wanna call them, technical term. Uh, that's actually like an antenna set. So he's gonna be stood, and I'm gonna take this apart and, oh boy, okay. Come on, go he's gonna basically live in here, little man. Mr. Crewman, this will go back on top. And I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna break something, but yeah, the idea is he's gonna sit in there and he'll be quite visible. Uh, you'll be able to see him uh, doing some um, artillery crewman stuff. So yep, so I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna skip forward to the future, paint this guy up and finish my weathering and we'll show you the final finished product. Right, so all finished, complete with extensive streaking and griming with AK Interactive products. 
Gluing it into place did prove to be uh, manageable but still very tricky. As said, uh, the right gun stand doesn't properly align to the floor, but I did manage to get the roof on okay. Uh, the key is to glue the interior detail in place in the roof, as uh, said before, before trying to uh, put it all together. I then applied the super glue and all the contact points. I had to work really quickly to get it all to fit in place. Had a part, uh, had a problem with part of the, the bucket bottom thing, I'm not aligning to the roof, and ended up having to use a, a flat um, head screwdriver to pop it into place. You can see there are some gaps, especially with the rear door, um, when the rear door is shut, and also with the front of the bucket towards uh, what would be described as the back of the driver's compartment. But overall, I am happy with it. You can see the crewman in there with his uh, bendy barrel rod and the interior detail uh, with these photos. So overall, a very lengthy build with a lot of time spent getting the resin to fit. I'm not sure I recommend this kit to most people given you want to be quite experienced from a modeling point of view and also willing to pay a fair bit of cash uh, for what could be described ultimately as poor quality. But either way, hopefully it was interesting and helpful to those of you who wish to build this kit. Thanks for watching. Veteran Platoon, sound off. Tank Commander Glenn. Tank Commander Watchdog Van Etten. Lieutenant Mitchell. Color Sergeant DuPont. Sergeants Brady, Adal, Gilliam, Merrill. Veterans Gibson, Hall, Lundeen, Witten. Guardsman Combs, Hill, Nitten, Nguyen, Smith, Tom, Tomkin. Conscript Craft.